Hello and welcome to Freedom and Four Paws, the show where we hear inspiring stories from amazing people travelling the world and living their best life, often with their pets in tow. From slow mads to digital nomads, house and pet sitters, expats and families with their dogs on the road. In this podcast, find out how travel can truly set you free. Very excited to have Lisa on the line with us. She is here live from Alaska, which is, I don't know, I just find that very cool sitting here in in Brisbane, Australia, as we record this. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, Lisa has um, found an enviable travel lifestyle. She's she's found house and pet sitting. So we're excited to to kind of um, dive deep into your experience and and your stories, Lisa. You're certainly living your best life, Lisa. We love chatting to people like you. So tell us about your story so far. Well, so I actually, I've always pet sat for other people my entire life as a kid growing up because we've always had some sort of a dog or a cat. And then um, as an adult, I always had dogs. In Maine, I had quite a few animals. We had ponies, chickens, turkeys, pigs, rabbits, you cats, are an animal dogs, person. everything. <laughs> yeah. And, then, um, and so I didn't really do it much until my son, you know, my son was getting older. And then I was like, well, you know, I actually worked at a credit union for many years in human resources. And I was like, what am I going to do? I unfortunately got a divorce and I actually had to um, quit my job, sell my house in 2018 in Alaska, go back to Connecticut. And I took care of both of my parents, both were my mom was really very ill and dad was has a heart condition and he was getting himself ill, taking care of her. Aww. They have a big old Victorian home in Connecticut and it was four stories and he just wasn't taking care of himself. So Same, yeah. that was about seven months. She did pass and I had to get him out of that house into a condo. And that's when it was kind of like, you know, what am I going to do now? I'm going to go back to Alaska, but I don't want to buy another house. My son was already fighting forest fires here in Alaska in the, in the season, you know, and I was like, I bought an RV. Awesome. <laughs> and that's what I'm in right now, the same one. And I said, you know what? If that way, if my son comes out from fire and he's, he was 23 at the time, yeah, he's going to want to live with me, you know, actually up above, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> but just in case, you know, so then I said, well, you know, I'm going to live in this and I'm going to figure out what I want to do. And so then that summer came and I was, you know, still farting around, figuring out what I wanted to do. And my son suddenly says, guess what, mom, I'm going to New Zealand to go to helicopter flight wow. school. I'm like, what? Well, what am I going to do? I'm like, oh, heck with it. So I said, I'm going to Europe. <laughs> and I went to seven countries in Europe, house and pet sitting through trusted house sitters. And so I went to Germany, England, France, and Spain. But while I was in Spain, I went out to Morocco. Then I went from Italy. I went to, through Italy. I went to um, Switzerland. It was just, it was just oh, amazing. Fantastic. It was just phenomenal. And I probably would have stayed longer. Granted, COVID did hit. I, I came back in December because I was my dad's first Christmas without my mom. You know, 57 years. I was like, I, I better everybody get together, all the kids and be there for him. But then I just headed off to Costa Rica with my girlfriend in January. And when I came back to Alaska again, I was like, when am I going to, you know, I, I house and pet sitting started right up. So many of my friends have, you know, a girlfriend has two horses. He's her husband does rodeos. So she's like, we're always either yeah. going to the rodeos and we don't want to bring the little dogs. Obviously you can't bring the chickens. So it be kind of came a thing here. And then Rover.com, I had started here in the last with as well as my friends but then it was I'd met people on Rover because it's a smaller community Palmer and Wasilla is it's called the Matanuska Valley and then it, it expands but I walked up to a house through Rover and I'm like wait a minute you used to work with your sister you know you're Kenna and she's like oh my gosh <laughs> and so wow. almost that point became word of mouth like hey Lisa will say you know fantastic I my RV in their yard I'm like I don't even have to go in your house it's right here and at this point, because my son was fighting fires all the time, I did have a husky that lasted 14 years. He was an Alaskan husky mutt. He oh, the, the greatest thing. He passed away. So now it was just me in this lab. He's a lab and a um, Tennessee treehound mix rider. I'm like, they're all my friends. I'm like, well, there's a stipulation. I can come to your house if my dog gets along with your dog. Yep. And that was awesome. it. They're everywhere I went. And they're like, well, we know rider. I'm like, I know. So. It just became one, you know, where it was like, if I can have him, because I'm not leaving my dog home alone in the exactly. RV you know, while I'm in your house. And wow. so that became the thing. And then 
my you know, COVID hit, obviously. I was still babysitting people's dogs. They were just moving around Alaska. Then when my son went to New Zealand, I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to go to New Zealand. I'm going to see my son. He actually wanted me to fly the dog with him, but that didn't work, obviously. I was like, no. That's challenging. Yeah. That's not going to happen. So, but it was like every couple of months was like, oh, I'll be able to go. I'll be able to go. And I I never got to go. And then I was supposed to go that May of 2020, obviously didn't 2020, yeah. He graduates in a year and a half. He graduates in... October of 21, I'm going to make it for his graduation. And I'm tearing up because I didn't make it. Oh, oh, I, was so upset. It. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. And it was just, and so then I was like, okay, I was in Maine from July of 2020. I was like, that's it. I'm going to go see family on the East Coast. So I drove this RV all by myself, 8,000 miles with the dogs oh, wow. all the way to Maine. <laughs> so my family's in Connecticut and New Hampshire. And I could see them and drive and see them whenever. And it was fabulous because my dad was happy because, you know, I was closer and see him five hours away, you know. But everywhere in Maine, it was funny because I, I, my friends have a monster farm. I used to work with them ages ago when my son was a baby. I worked in their sign shop and they had homeschooled six kids. So he just disappeared with them on the farm while I worked in the sign shop. <laughs> and so I said, we're back. And so I helped him with the signs and Ryder just played with all the you know, no, there's no young kids anymore, but um, kids of kids, you know. And so, what a story, Lisa. That was Rover. It was a biggie in Maine until people yeah. got to know me as well. Because, I mean, I'd go to it. There was like, it's a beautiful homes that um, they take over and they make into wedding barns. Like my friends of Sweats wow. actually did it with one of their barns as well. And they're like, okay, we're going to call you every time there's a wedding and they're coming from out of state and they bring their dogs. Oh, we're going to say, yes, you can bring your dogs because she can, I took some, there was two of them that I took away from the wedding because they knew the dogs would be nuts. <laughs> and so I brought them to where I was and they just ran around. And another one, I just, there's beautiful fields out behind and they're by a lake. So I just walked their dogs for like three hours. They're like, we need them. Then we don't. And we need them for pictures. And we don't. That's <laughs> so fantastic. I just Lisa, um, them. I'm curious to know with that kind of work, um, because obviously a lot of us swap house and pet sitting for a free stay, but that feels like a a, a job and and repeat. Yeah, whenever I did it through rover.com or friends, I get paid. Like now that I'm back in Alaska, I actually get paid. Okay, brilliant. I only did the trusted house sitters when it was abroad for free. Oh, okay. Unless I knew someone, you know, and it was funny when I I finally did get to go see my son in New Zealand in May. Oh, yeah. Five weeks. And I was, I was frantic going, we got to find a house. We got to have, and we went up to Christchurch. I'm like, Elias, guess what? We're staying with the house. We're going to take care of this dog for the weekend. He's like, what? We're doing it? (laughs) And the woman was lovely. And it turns out she, she was on the top of the South Island. Elias was down below. And she's like, I know friends of, and you just, you know, in a country, they're naming off people that they both know. And my son had only been there for a year. But, you know. Oh, wow. But my biggest thing was always making sure in Maine, you know, can my dog come with me? And even if I walked other people's dogs, there was quite a few with puppies. I'm like, my dog is a very good dog where I want him to run free because he does listen and he'll run ahead and come back to me. And so I, here in Alaska, my girlfriend had two little brand new pups that I was like, okay, Ryder's going to train them. You know, when they run, <laughs> yeah. they just follow them. So they come back and I'm like, good babies, you know, you, you show. And then this other puppy, the girl's like, how did you get our dog to come back? I'm like, it was all right. Or, it was, That's it awesome. Wasn't we used to have a dog you know? like that. Mm. <laughs> our yeah, dog's not no. so much like that, but our blue cattle yeah. dog was definitely like that. So, so yeah. we feel you. I'm really um, yeah. inspired by the fact that you had a period there where, you know, you had, you had a, a lot of commitments and you went and looked after a lot of people, but then through yeah. that, um, experience you you found a need to have to figure out what you wanted to do and you've created yeah. this beautiful life and business based around travel yeah. and and pet care. Um, it's yeah. fantastic. Um, Lisa, you've mentioned a couple of you've mentioned trusted house sitters and um, Rover. Yeah. Rover. Are there any are they the key kind of platforms that you have used to find work um, or opportunities or where else do you use no, social media? Rover or- in Rover in Alaska and Maine, because both Maine is a very, very rural area where I was. Um, we were an hour to like a grocery store even, so it was bad. Um, that I, I know my niece in um, New York City was asking, you know, she, she's um, she was doing some, she does like social media work for, um, she was with Discover Channel. 
And so she was like, hey, you do the dog today. And I said, yeah, go on Rover. And she's like, I've seen the platforms WAG or WAGS and okay. Rover. And she ended up using WAGS. And I have to actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see, I actually have to head out tonight to go to a funeral back east, unfortunately. And I'm going to see her and I'll be, you know, I say, how, how is it going with your dog city? Yeah. You know, and, you know, the funny story is my brother, Matthew, um, is he worked in New York City and he lived in New York City for quite a while. His very best friend, Jonathan Buck, his father, I actually saw it on a Jeopardy as one of the questions. His father was the very first man to ever start the dog sitting in New York City. Oh, wow. So it was a question like, who was the first person in New York City to ever start the dog walking where you're walking multiple oh, dogs? Oh, think about that stuff. Park. And I was like, he, he screeched out of the picture and said to Paul, he's like, hey, Lise, look. So it was amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, that's cool. You that know? is so, cool. Wow. He's yeah, a very good friend of my brother's, you know, that I know very well. That like, <laughs> his dad started it, you know. Okay. So I'm in this limbo going, okay, you're going to get a job. You know, what are you going to do? You know, because everybody's like, you're going to be in Alaska in the winter. I'm like, yeah, I've done it three years already, Maine okay. and Alaska. You've got it's this. Pretty bad, <laughs> so don't worry. Now I'm getting, I'm like, now what am I going to do? You know, I'm like, I can either park the RV and head off to Europe again and travel doing house and, you know, pet sitting. Mm, that seems pretty cool, you know, but the I've got friends there, already. Yeah. I'm like, my one friend twice already, another lady's, how about December? How about February? I'm like, oh, you people are taking me here. Awesome. Brilliant. So Lisa, what is your most memorable sit? You probably got heaps, but yeah, do you have a story? you narrow it down story? to one or two? <laughs> no. All of the sits in Europe were pretty amazing. The Germany was probably the least because it was in a city. And it's amazing how you can tell that poor dog is not used to running around. So you'd walk him down the flight of stairs and you're walking down a city block to get to a park. And he was just so erratic. And I left from Germany straight to Spain. And then suddenly I have to drive five miles up this gorgeous, you know, mountainside. And there's six all she was a lab trainer back in England, like they raised labs and, and bred, bred them and all that. So there was at least a few labs, but then this crazy, crunchy looking, she called him Nelson Mandela because his hair was sticking up and <laughs> he'd never been, I think he'd been tied up his entire life and he oh, had kind of like a fangle foot that stuck child. out. He was so cute. And then there was two others that were just mutts, you know, that she found, she rescued gorgeous property so it, it was it was all enclosed in with a fence and then mm. an even bigger fence so the dog had all this freedom to run around and beautiful he had olive trees lime trees lemon trees orange trees pomegranate trees almond trees so i just spent that was october and it was still it was just amazing and all the dogs were just funny do funny, you find funny. that the rescue dogs like that we found that in, in some of our Europe sits as well. Some of the, the rescue dogs who've had a terrible beginning, it's they actually, it feels like they know that, that they've been helped because they are the, yeah. they were the most affectionate, beautiful, loving Love dogs. Mm. Um, like yeah. we've got a, a little West Highland <laughs> Terrier and, and well, he's, he's gorgeous, but he's a little bit entitled, I think. Yes. <laughs> Whereas some of these dogs were just, they, they did know that, that, people yeah. were there to help them and they were so grateful and just beautiful right. souls I mean it sounds like you've had that experience yeah. as well like if you think about that one dog Nelson Mandela I was always like he had a look like he was gonna bite you but he just looked like that he was so scrawny looking but he loved to, to meddle with him and rub his head and he was oh, just yeah. like rolling on oh. his side he just didn't like being brushed I tried to brush him a couple times and run away and brush him he was just amazing. And can you imagine the dog being tied up and never having any human oh, contact? Terrible. Horrific. Like you said, Horrific. You woke up to him and he was like a snuggle as much as he would let you. You know, the labs are in your face. Mine's half a lab. And he's actually with my son. Oh, like, how spoiled he is. He's spoiled too. But <laughs> you're absolutely right. And, you know, obviously the lab she adored because she raised them for babies. And one of them was the mother and the nephew and the son. So, you know, they all knew each other from birth. Um, but it, you're right and then both all my dogs have been rescued dogs yep every single Fantastic. one of them so beautiful it, it actually prolongs their life i think because they don't have those yes. rare Stress. illnesses yes <laughs> lisa with pandemic restrictions easing people are heading back to work a lot of furry family members are being left at home which is causing anxiety mm. do you have any advice for managing separation anxiety with pets mm. have you had you must well, have had I experience think, where you've landed that's it. what that's what i think helped having Ryder with me because a lot oh, of the dogs yeah. they, they were saying oh my gosh our dog is anxious 
you know, he, like he's been inside all day and a lot, um, unfortunately where, you know, they're left in a kennel in the house. Mm-hmm. When you show up, you're not only walking in and now they see you and they're in a kennel. So they're either freaking out yep. or they're just too calm or they're just, you know, they just so excited. But the minute they'd see Ryder and I'd say, go outside, and Ryder would oh, bolt out the door, out the door, they'd go. And it'd be yeah. like, oh. I have a buddy. I don't have to worry about, is this lady going to be nice to me or not? You know, and then obviously they see my dog coming up to me, just hugging and everything. And they're like, oh, let me try. You know, he helped a lot with, there was, you're right, quite a few anxious dogs that were left. You know, some dogs I'd go if they wanted me twice a day or three times a day. I kind of did a 10 mile radius when I was in Maine because I didn't feel like driving forever. But it was definitely the help that either in their own yard, if that's all I could do with them, or take the darn dog and run with them. And a lot were like, I was like, well, I took your dog and we ran him to where I'm running my dog. They're like, what? Oh, we've never (laughs) done that before. I'm like, why not? It's huge. Yeah. I said, he stayed with Ryder. Yep. And I called them both. And obviously when I have a new dog, I'll bring treats. So mine is like, oh, he never gets treats. He's like, this is awesome. (laughs) help them to come back but they were just so excited to have a buddy yeah that that oh so many they were like oh my gosh and one dog they said she's never been around other dogs ever Aww. and I was like well I I brought her outside and I'm like I'm gonna try Ryder she was growling at him but he just ignored her ignored her the whole time running around the yard and she run Good behind boy. him and he turned and by the time I took pictures and they're like we cannot believe that her dog is actually with the dog. Mm. And when they'd show up at home, I made sure I was home so they could see. And they're like, oh my gosh, she's a different dog. And Isn't I'm like, well, beautiful. it's all him. It's all wow. Him. Yeah. So I think if I if it was just me, yes, I would love on them. And it wouldn't be as fun for them just walking through the woods. Mm. But having him to go sniff and all that, it, it was kind of like a, oh, That's okay. awesome. That's a benefit that I hadn't thought yeah. of taking your own dog on on sits because it's something that we yeah. um because we got a COVID puppy and it's something that we'd like to explore um because yeah. obviously yeah when we were house and pet sitting um we didn't it like yourself in in Europe yeah, when, uh, we didn't have a dog then but now we're like oh how right. do we you know and it's lovely to to talk to the likes of yourself um and we've talked to a few other people as well who who take yeah. who take their pups mm. on yeah. the sits and but they make it really obvious in their profile that it's a package yeah. deal and that the dogs <laughs> like really, really fit, you know, with yeah. lifestyle. Um, yeah. So, and I love that you've said there that it benefits the dogs that you go and and sit. So yeah. that's really cool. I'm wondering yeah. um, with your, so obviously it feels like you get a lot of repeat business, which is awesome yes. and well done. Congratulations. We love that. Um, <laughs> with the ones that you apply for, um, do you mm-hmm. have advice for people on um, how to make your profile stand out? Because it's becoming really competitive now. It's a, there's lots yes, of people right. to do this, especially the nicer sits. Um, what's your advice or what's worked for you in terms of making your profile stand out, but also finding the sits that work really well for you? Like it's a good fit. Yeah. So I think like, uh, obviously it was only a couple of years ago when I did it in Europe, but I just kind of said, I live with my dogs. <laughs> kind of like you said, my dog, when, when, even when I had both of them, if I was driving an hour, the dogs came with me. I had wireless collars, heated water bowls, dog igloos. <laughs> they still said, uh, uh-uh, we're coming with you. My dogs, the back of my car right now is not seat. It's permanently down. There's always a bucket of water. There's always toys. It's just Beautiful. everybody's, you know, my girlfriend's kids are like, um, can we put up the seat and Ryder can sit next to us for once? I'm like, I guess so. <laughs> Jeez, that's a lot of work because this is for animals, you know? Yeah. So let them know that I live with the dog, you know, like mm. obviously living in this too, the dog's literally right next to me half the time, you know, that um, if you don't have your own animals, it's hard for people to understand how much you're going to adore this. You know, mm. right now my son is here with me and they, that's why the dog is with him. And I'm like, oh, this is so weird. I, I'm so empty without my dog yeah. here. Even yeah. though I know he's with my son, I'm like, what am I going to do? That's why I'm like, maybe I'll have to go away because I can't, I can't do it here. If my son's going to take him all the time. I'm like, <laughs> I <never> know, you <laughs> know? so I, a lot of times I wrote, you know, I wrote, I have had numerous dogs. I don't think I could ever be without a dog. And even in RV, I'm like, Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do if he takes Ryder? I'm gonna have to get another dog. Oh, I'm not gonna train him in the winter. You're thinking of all these things, but it's That's all the right. <laughs> There's a blanket on the couch all the time. Everything's 
around animals. Yes, yes. I so think if really I stress that, thing. and then I, you know, I think I put obviously reviews of house sits, but I even put personal reviews where my friends were literally like, "Oh my gosh, this girl, if you know, you better sit down because you better not have black pants on because there's dog hair in the." to jump in the front but he does you know they they would you know outright give me a call if you want to know how much this woman loves dog you know that's beautiful go to the movies and there's a dog in the back seat I'm like I'd rather be here than at home you know <laughs> yeah Lisa we are then, like you was- <laughs> before we um had a dog when we we're living overseas we'd be the ones that sort of go down to the park and harass the people with their dogs about your dog. if we saw somebody on the chair yeah. the dog we sort of just slowly make our way yeah. down the carriage and sit yes, next to them move. or we'd cross over <laughs> to the road and we'd forget that the dog had an owner we'd start talking to the dog and we're like, oh we haven't acknowledged the person holding the dog how about when you're walking your dog and the kid's there and you're like, oh, my gosh, right here, look at the kid. And you're like, oh, oh, my gosh, what if they don't want their kid to come up to the dog? Yes. I'm like, what if you want? I'm like, the mother's looking at me like, Billy, I'm like, sorry, sorry. I know mine is friendly. And I can't, I was a kid. I was always like, I, you know, I want to pet you. Oh, and that's, that's how so and, oh, it kills me not to be able to touch the service dog because they're the calmest. You're like, oh, this is we are a breed of our own, aren't we? Like, <laughs> oh, God, she's protecting her older. That's really cute. Yeah, my Facebook posts are all stupid animal things. You know, like, oh, look, that dog helps the dog for the doggy with the little chicken next to me. Well, hey, that's the best content on the internet. So yeah. that's that's we totally <laughs> we're totally with you there, Lisa. Do you have um again? You've you've had lots of experience um, liaising with um, homeowners and um, parents of of fur babies or not fur babies. Um, What's your advice on, um, or how do you manage communication, um, like before, during, and after a sit? Oh, um, yeah, that too. It's a lot of people too. Like I'm a picture taker as well, <laughs> so <laughs> I, whether I stage it or not, it's not my fault. The dog jumped on the rock, but I'm like, oh my god, turn this way <laughs> because that's an awesome picture. I'll give them a treat. I do the picture, and they'll be like, here's. Stevie, you know, he's off having fun and they're like, oh my That's gosh, so <laughs> you know, constant pictures all day long. And I'm like, sorry, that was a lot of pictures. You know, it's like improving the ones where the dog was anxious. It's like, look at he's running with you know my dog rider. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's nonstop pictures, nonstop texting. Like, and a lot of times when I'm at their home, even if it's for a minute, you know, say the dog splattered water all over. I clean it up. You know, I have had so many people when I've stayed there say the house looks almost better than when we got there because yes, I'm we've cleaning, had that too. I clean floors and kitchen. You know, I'm cleaning everything because I'm yeah. like, well, I wouldn't want my. You know, even mm. if there was a tiny dog here on the, well, that could have been mine too. So I better clean it up. You know, that type of thing. But it's just that, yes, just always be oh, commu- communication nonstop. I've had questions. I'm like, oh my gosh, your dog you know, wanted to run, but he's pulling. Is it okay if I let him off the leash? You know, because I think he's going to stick with Ryder or I'm, I added like my mm. dog, I have like five leashes. I'm like, he really is just sticking with Ryder. I really want to let him off. I'm in an area that I know he can't go in. You know, so I'm always constantly. Yeah. Hey. More communication <laughs> want, is better. I don't want him to disappear either, but I really think he would have more fun, you know, or whatever, or I do was just send pictures and just constantly. Yeah, yeah, Lisa, we're like you. We overshare with the pictures. We had a house mm. sitter come and look after our dog. We're normally the house sitter, so it was a, a <laughs> I know. for us to have a go, yeah, have to look through the all side. the different files and show, yes. pick somebody. And then we like to see photos like in the morning when they wake up or before they go to bed. And the yeah. person we chose didn't share enough sort of photos, which yeah, sort of like worried it was, us. Was a short sit. Yeah, but... yeah. So in the next couple we got, they overshared. And we, and we loved, loved it. it. We said, Don't <laughs> yeah, worry. Right. You, you want to spam our yeah, messages? Spam that is fine. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, yeah, it's really important to have communication. We mm. used to do FaceTime calls with the um, owners of the best. We'd meet the dogs yep. online. And we still have WhatsApp groups now where we uh, yes. keep in contact with um, yeah, I know. Customers. You know, I was in New Zealand and I did a house sit in France and their daughter is with the big cats at the Auckland Zoo. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to meet your daughter. It didn't turn out because I had one day to get through there and she had just got back from France visiting her parents the day before and it didn't work out but I was like oh my gosh I have to meet them Eliza's like we have to go to the zoo I'm like well we have to go to the zoo anyway but yes. we're gonna go and meet the daughter of my husband 
it. And he's like, what the heck, mom? I'm like, what do you mean? But it's Why your network. Mm. It's your network. She's it's my lovely. new friend, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like, any of them, any of you ever want to come to Alaska, come. <laughs> you're, I'm Beautiful. your new buddy, you know? Spain, we text all the time, you know, I'm WhatsApp, you're right. You know, hey, how's it going? Oh, I'm good. How about you? Because you're you your know? friends. It's mm. it's a lovely yeah. experience. Yeah. You know, almost really every sad. set I did in Europe, and actually here too, I go ahead and meet you know, even if it's a day ahead or not, but in Europe with Spain, I was there a week ahead. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, I don't care. So you, so you become their friends before, like in France, because they were out in the middle of nowhere. She's like, come at least a day before. I'm like, can I come two days before? Because that's on the Spain schedule. And they're like, okay. They took me to the grocery store so I could get what I wanted. And then you in England, right, the right. day after, the day after, I was like, can, I, can we, they're like, we had to take you to this really cool pub. I'm like, okay. You're right. You become friends with them yeah. and you're hanging out with them, not just with their dog, but even yes. with days before, days and you after. live like a local, which and is awesome. It's yeah. very sad. We've been on some house sets and it's really sad when you have to leave the dogs and you're quite emotional. It takes us two or three days sometimes to sort of get that out of the system. Yeah. Lisa, you sound like you're in huge demand. Mm. What's next for you over the next 12 months? I'm going to have to stay in Alaska at least for a couple months to make sure my kid gets a job and <laughs> I, oh, I, I my <laughs> Settled. And then I got to figure out if he doesn't have a place to live, do I get Ryder or not? You know, if he has a place to live, he's going to want Ryder. Then I can head out to Europe again or, um, you know, wherever I want to go next. We might you know? see you there with any luck. Yeah. Because <laughs> if he needed this RV to live in, which I don't know if he, I'm like, you to get it clean, you know. Um, I'd have, I, my, my doors are open again to I don't know what I want to do. You know, I, I really want to, I want to, it's an adventure. <laughs> people in Alaska because they've told when someone's like somebody just texted me yesterday Emily told me that you'd house it I'm like yep okay so I'm glad that I have the referrals you know because it's just people know me you're right in Alaska I've noticed there's so many more people even um pet sitting and when I left two years ago I'm like what people would be like we can't find anybody forever and I'm like now it's like now it's booming we called and I'm like wow here Wow, that's crazy. It's lovely so, to see though, isn't it? Um, it is, it is. Because like you said, people are trusting others and, and yeah. you know, it is. I mean, my actually one of my friends, that that girl that I said, I know your sister, she's actually making me come to watch her house. I'm like, you don't have any animals. She's like, I know. But I kind of always says how you leave the house yeah, and you're always there and you always turn in the lights on. You're bringing in, you're already doing everything that you're supposed to. We yeah. feel so much Beautiful. better if you just be there. I'm like, okay. That's fantastic. That is really, really lovely. Yeah. Um, Lisa, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you Thank today. You. And, and I'm your, glad we finally got through. Well, your enthusiasm and joy really shines through. Mm. And it's lovely to meet um, such a, uh, a warm animal person. So Passionate animal thank you person. for your time. Um, is there <laughs> anywhere online people can follow your adventures? Are you on? Oh, um, I've, I've got my Facebook. I see Facebook. Another thing that I did after the divorce and all that, because I was with a very, not a Debbie Downer, what do you call him? A Dan Downer. <laughs> yeah. I was always like, no matter what's going on, like that, I, I had to go to Connecticut to take my parents. But what oh. came out of it? was a new me, yes. you know, and it's just amazing. And my, my little logo, I guess you could say, is love the sun you're in. Aww. And no matter if it's raining, if you're with a bad person, a good person, you just have to be good for you. And if you have an animal, great. That makes good it on you, Lisa. Um, so on Instagram, I'm at love the sun you're in. Oh, okay. That yeah, we will love, remember then, that. Mm. On Facebook, it's, you know, my L Grand Champ is my last name. And, and that's a pretty good name, too. I'm like, you know what, Dad? I'm going to take your name back. It's a really <laughs> oh, good that's name. so cute. I think I'm never going to change that name again. And, you know, so it's, and it's also um, right underneath my title in Facebook with my name is, again, Love the Sun. And I had a girlfriend help me make the sun, you know, logo that I wanted for it. And, and then I'm fantastic. even thinking about starting my own pet sitting, you know, Love the Pet you're With. So I'm going to try and figure out that because I have all this time now that I'm back and settled again. I'll have to figure out what I want to do. But yeah, we will stay in touch with you and you keep us updated on your adventures and your business as well. And we look forward to um, meeting you in person one day, no doubt, surrounded by lots of animals. (laughs) Following your adventures online. Bye. (laughs) Bye bye.
Thanks for joining us on the Freedom and Four Paws podcast. This production has been inspired by our awesome Facebook community. Join the group by searching Pets and House Sitting Travel and Digital Nomads or find the group via the link on our Facebook page, Travel Live Learn. This podcast is brought to you by TravelLiveLearn.com. Visit the site today to find out more about this podcast, access show notes, and sign up to our mailing list for free house and pet sitting application templates, guides, and a 25% off registration code for trusted house sitters. If you love this content and want more of it, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favourite podcast service. You can find us on YouTube too. Look up Travel, Live, Learn. Until next time, give your pet a pat from us and say yes to that next adventure.